Hello, my beautiful co-creators of the new paradigm. I hope this video finds you well. Thank you for checking in with my channel. I have definitely missed you guys and I have been, you could say, off YouTube for a little while. Um, just checking in to let you know what I have been doing in the background. I have been looking for a new format to share the information that I've been receiving from Arjun and Ayayel over the past two to three years. Maybe it helps to add that before I started vocal channeling, I used to do a lot of automatic writing. Now, I never really stopped doing that. By now, I'm even working on a book. So much automatic writing has come through that I am in the process of organizing this information and giving it my very best attempt to organize it in such a way that it can be read. I'm working in two languages, both Dutch and English. It's a lot of work. I'm asking for help with translation and checking of the uh, grammar and spelling and so forth. English is my second language and though I'm always continuously inspiring myself, to learn new words and to read books in English so that I can pick up a thing or two. It does cost me a little bit more effort than it does to just speak in Dutch right away. So when I'm, you know, organizing that book and putting stuff in place, um, there's days where I feel really it's a lot of flow to work on that. And there's days when that's not so much the case and I better do something else. So I love the variety and I've been quite busy on different projects in that way creatively. When it comes to the YouTube channel, I've been feeling an urge to introduce a kind of change to reinvent the format in which I've been sharing. And this is really just me playing around with what's possible and kind of tuning in with you guys to hear what you like as well. Since I do believe this is all an interactive relationship and I would love to hear your opinions along the way. So based on this automatic writing, I came up with the idea to just basically read to you guys uh, segments of the book. And in particular, segments that are on current day topics that haven't necessarily been as elaborately discussed up until now. So I was thinking to just read to you some of these chapters and to hear how you like it. And while I read, you'll be seeing some different images. Otherwise, it can get a little boring, I imagine. Just seeing me <laughs> with my nose in the papers. Um, you're, you'll be seeing different background images. Just, you know, some calming. I don't know what I'm going to put there yet. Something. I hope you enjoy. And uh, I need to explain this to you. When I do automatic writing, most of the... Um, subjects that cover current day events are initiated originally by clients who've had private sessions with Arjun or friends uh, that are aware of developments in the ET channeling corner and then we discuss different angles and compare you know information that came through i want to underline that all paths are valid all truths are true it's always up to you what you feel you resonate most with what you feel you can use in your life i will admit that in the beginning stages of taking um these current event subjects from clients as a fundamental starting point to start writing from in observing that information differing from information that has already come through other channels in the field that did make me kind of insecure in the beginning stages so this is say one covid hit for instance um this is one of the reasons why i have been kind of shy in sharing this information on the youtube channel and I think admitting that is important. I also think I need you to know that I'm done with that part of me that was choosing to, well, when it comes down to it, just to play small. And that I'm really excited for sharing this, well, perspective of the Yariel with all of you. And I'm so curious how you like this new format. This is how I worked on the segment that I'm going to read to you in a little bit. So I would take the question of somebody else, sit down for the automatic writing, go into the state, get the answer from Arjun, 
And then if I felt it might be worth it diving deeper or pushing a little more for more information, I would just take that part upon me myself. I would allow my rational mind to ask a follow-up question and another follow-up question and so on. So the eventual result still is a Q&A. It reads like a Q&A. You listen to it like a Q&A. So this video is pretty much going to be an audio book in that sense and a trial version. Just my first part, I'm thinking I'm going to share this in segments. So um, particularly because it's quite a lot. And this is about politics. We haven't really covered that in depth so far with Arjun on this YouTube channel. But now I have with him in automatic writing and I'm truly, truly excited about sharing all of this with you guys. On the practical side, uh, whenever a question is being asked, you will hear this sound. And whenever Arjun is giving his perspective or when the Yayel are answering that question, you will first hear this sound. And that way you will be able to tell the difference since it will be just my voice reading the entire thing. And yeah, well, this I hope brings some clarity as to who's speaking in that sense. I uh, hope you're in for an experiment. If you have any thoughts on this, share in the comments. I'll see you on the other side. We can give you an example from our own society, even though it's quite different from yours. We're not using so much the idea of votes as you do when it comes to your elections. Rather, we make energetic measurements when certain decisions need to be made that concern our collective. Ah, I see. Can you share some more on how these measurements are made? At this point in our timeline, we simply make such decisions energetically as a species. Synchronicity will allow us to shift to whatever version of reality best represents our inner state of being in relation to that subject, as it naturally does. The difference with your world might be that we are consciously aware of every minute fluctuation in energy as we shift and we course correct along the way if needed. Whereas the majority of your people at this point in your evolution more or less allows themselves to just shift by default. But we can speak of that some more another time. Next to that for us, say when we face a more complex situation involving other species, for instance, we may apply the assistance of certain experts You've got experts in shifting through parallel realities. In our society, we have what you perhaps might call a type of councils that exist out of expert parallel timeline energy readers. These individuals can go into altered states and then allow themselves to tune in with the state of being of our entire collective at that moment and then in a sense quote unquote add the energy vibration of certain specific concepts and ideas that we feel lay ahead of us as possibilities in co-creations with other species for instance. In consciously combining these vibrational fields each of these experts can then explore the quote unquote rough outlines so to speak of the most probable realities available that we might see as a quote-unquote result from acting in a certain direction. And then you use these results in your decision making. Yes, when useful insights are allowed into our awareness, in that way we do. I see. And do you need any type of technology to do this? No, we do not. This is all a purely telepathic endeavor, you might say. Yet, the results of this energetic exploration, for instance, can be quote-unquote saved on a type of crystalline 
device that in function is comparable to your hard disks. So we may share our findings with beings from other civilizations if desired at another point in quote unquote time. Once the coordinates of such a vibrational anchor point have been quote unquote noted in this manner, the retracing or tuning in, if you will, to a close version of that path remains quite readily available for those to whom it might be relevant. What do you mean when you say tuning in with this data will bring the observer to a quote unquote close version of that path? Does this mean it doesn't bring you an exact copy of the timeline that has been observed by your experts? Correct. As one can never truly revisit, quote unquote, the exact same perspective of a, quote unquote, other reality. It would always be a slightly different reality altogether. You, we, and all that we know of within the infinite expressions of all that is, shifts its consciousness focus point through an endless amount of parallel realities all the time. The outer reflects the inner. What you put in is what you get back. And so, by the time we would be tuning in with such a quote-unquote stored reality segment again, the one tuning in with it must have become another person. They would be looking through a different lens of perception, so to speak, which would then automatically result in the observation of a slightly different version of the reality stored on this device. These coordinates, therefore, are seen by us as an estimation, not an exact or rigid point in space and time. Just like you, yourself, over the years, may have changed your final conclusions and feelings relating to certain memories you believe you have of the quote-unquote past as you create it in the now. The conclusions have changed because you allowed yourself to shift into a new version of yourself. That version of you doesn't look at the same quote-unquote memories in the way that the old version of you did. Ah, I see. But if your entire collective is capable of tuning in with certain parallel reality options, why would you need experts? Well, first of all, we are following our highest excitement in any given moment. Going on this specific type of deeper timeline exploration simply isn't always everyone's highest excitement at the same time. In some occasions it might be, but often it is not. And so, synchronicity has allowed us to become aware of a select group of naturally talented individuals who generally do feel a high level of enthusiasm to tune into more complex matters, so to speak, through time and space. In this case, we are speaking of a type of master readers in what you might perhaps choose to refer as, as a type of possible and probable timeline analysis. These individuals know how to focus clearly within a much broader bandwidth than most of us do for the specific exploration and observation of certain concepts and ideas. The reason we call them specialists is their ability to tune in with specific cross-sections of momentum in the co-created evolutionary paths concerning interaction between multiple species at once. Perhaps you could compare them to some degree to those that you refer to as psychics in your world. Like you, we have people with many different talents and gifts. We have teachers and students in our world. For many of the professions and passions that are being explored and expressed by our civilization, Though fundamentally, we all consider ourselves to be everlasting students at the same time, as we shall never cease to learn. Ah, this makes a lot of sense. Funny, here I was, thinking that whatever anyone in your world thought or did was immediately known by everybody else, throughout your entire collective. I guess I just had that idea of a society being connected in a telepathic manner. At this point of our evolution, that level of transparency, though available at all times, is simply not constantly being chosen. 
remember that we are still physical, though be it in a higher vibrational reality than you are. And so, though we are of one mind, and more importantly so, of one heart, when it comes to the fundamental principles in our world, and though we can all collectively choose to tune in with one specific idea at the same time, we also still choose to have our own thoughts, our own little one-on-one -on -one encounters or specific group experiences, as you know these in your own world. Once your own species begins to experiment with the embracing of your naturally available state of telepathy on a larger scale, you will find that there will be many subjects and events that are openly accessible to tune in with for the entire collective. But there will still be the possibility for people to create the experience of what you call privacy. People will still be able to, in a sense, quote-unquote, focus their minds towards just one other person if they wish to share something just with them, for instance. Otherwise, if you would just randomly receive every single idea or consideration of all of those co-creating that reality with you, it would be way too overwhelming to remain centered in the idea of a physical being. In a non-physical collective, this, however, would be no problem. I see. So, in your world then, at your current level of telepathic interconnectedness, could you still have secrets for one another? To some degree, but not in the way you create the idea of certain secrets on your world. First of all, we all have been raised to know that, in the end, there is no such thing as a secret, really. All is known by the all that is, and since all is interconnected, there is no true way for it to quote-unquote hide anything from itself in the end. Yet, we also understand that within and between the vibrational differences between worlds and among different split-offs from the one, one can pretend that there is. Now, compared to your world at this moment in time, our world fundamentally vibrates on a high frequency of conscious awareness. We understand that we are unconditional love expressed in the temporary form of our species, exploring life as we know it. On that vibration, we can keep a quote-unquote secret from one another as long as the intent of keeping that secret is love-based in nature. In such a case, timelines will synchronistically align as to allow for us the joy of creating a surprise for one another, for instance. Love then becomes the driving engine, yet the entire concept of keeping a thought or idea from one another coming from a state of shame or in order to deliberately deprive someone else of their well-being wouldn't even occur to us. Doing this would simply be too far derived from our natural state of being. So then, how would you respond if we lied to you, for instance? We would immediately sense the gap between the vibration of your intent or your chosen state of being in that way and our own vibrational state of being. In other words, that idea, including the energy of your underlying motivational mechanism, would be transparent to us right away. In that sense, you cannot lie to us. Nor can you lie towards or amongst yourselves in that way, not really. You are just pretending that you can. At this point in your evolution, you have in that sense made it socially acceptable, or should we say, quote-unquote, desired even in some occasions, to suppress your intuitive registration of a lie being told or manipulation taking place, be it in private or large mass events. Still, there are many timelines available to you on which you allow yourselves to remember your true nature of interconnectedness. On these timelines, the illusion of lying in that sense, including any excuses to believe you need to do so, will eventually fall by the wayside. By then, the entire concept of lying will appear quite illogical to you, as right now it is to us. And 
And so this was the first part of this chapter. I really appreciate you for checking in. Please let me know in the comments how you liked this particular presentation uh, of this material. Give the video a like if you like and subscribe if you like. And I will see you in the next one. Love you so much with deep, deep appreciation for your being. Bye.